Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Training Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law through this channel. I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the Million Dollar Challenge. So if anybody's not aware of this, this is a journey with investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategy called Compound Return Investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each with an average return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades, we do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video, we're going to be looking at MMTOP and the pressure building to get a resolution. We're also going to be looking at Sixmal CHWY, also known as Chewy, where Roaring Kitty has invested in over 9 million shares. And we're also going to be doing a review of the previous week's weekly watch list. So before we get started, let's have a look at what's happening in the markets. So first of all, headline here from Reuters, we can see that mega caps are boosting the Nasdaq in a choppy uh, trading session and the jobs data will be in focus uh, very soon. Uh, and also from CNBC, we can see that stocks are rising to the second half of 2024. So overall, not too uh, bad news. And uh, I'd like to also share some news with regard to Tixamal SNOW, also known as Snowflake, which is a stock that we have been watching. And we can see here, Goldman Sachs have added Snowflake uh, um, to um, the convi America's conviction list on Monday, Goldman Sachs. So it's a positive uh, news for this. And we can see this was also shared in the Discord. And finally, also good news with regard to Tesla. Also shared in the Discord, Tesla is up currently uh, approximately 6% at time of editing and it's surging past the $200 mark uh, ahead of the quarter two deliveries, which we are also expecting very soon. So I'm going to start by having a look at MNTLP and a reminder in terms of the Uniform Practice Code Committee of FINRA which was responsible for the U3 halt uh, and you could also say are also responsible potentially for being an obstacle in the way of uh, a path for re resolution because of potential conspiracy and conflict of interest. So shout out here to guess who in terms of a reminder and he stated here there are no coincidences, somebody is big mad that Curtis and the MMTLP army have dropped names and truths and the information was made public. So uh, I'm gonna remind everybody of, of the names. So the names are uh, being exposed in the Uniform Practice Code Committee of FINRA, which decided the U3 halt include Chris Stone, Patricia Casimates, John Megan, uh, Joseph Iraqi, Christopher Haynes. We also have Tom Nicholson, Matthew Price, Stephen uh, Dapich, Kelly Bell and Jeffrey chef tick so these are the key members of this uh, committee so these desi decided uh, to halt trading of mmtlp and we also know that many of these have that conflict of interest because they represent the broker dealers who fund um finra and the broker dealers would have had the biggest loss uh, if the u3 halt did not happen so uh, let's have a look at what uh, market transparency has posted with regard to um, a fire request and he stated here he's looking at 636,000 pages uh, and, is, and as he recalls Biden's 1.7 trillion dollar spending package only had 4,155 pages and Congress thought that was a lot so it makes you wonder what is, the hell is going on so let me repeat that number 636,000 pages so let's have a look at where it's referenced here uh, and what the um, what we can see here in terms of the SEC, they've stated here uh, for this uh, FOIA request at the bottom, they said they have identified approximately 10.6 gigabytes, which is equivalent to 636,000 pages of emails and that may be responsive to your request. So that just shows you the huge amount of work that the MMTLP community have done, but it also shows you how much we are being ignored. Uh, so let's move on to look at what DW stated and he stated with regard to Congress, what's the procedure when a regulator is found to be breaking their rules? What's your responsibility? What do you do? And at what point do you say this is outrageous and you need to investigate? So it looks like um, uh, their boundaries are cer certainly seem to be limitless. So where what 100 has stated is that MMTLP shareholders will win. Gardner Wade has also stated that the MMTLP army cannot be stopped. We will get justice. So two positive posts there. And what Jonah stated here is no one knows how it's going to end. I certainly agree with that. But McCabe, while he states that he wanted to explore liquidity and possible blockchain, he also stated that his shares 
uh, with AST and he would be able to transfer back. Obviously we know a share count will help but we don't know if a share count is going to happen and which is also stated is that a share count will prove an overage. McCabe's options, none of us are him and he's asked to continue the fight uh, from the MMTLP community whilst he continues to explore options i know he's in regular contact with people from congress uh, and the government and uh, as of yet i don't think there is a breakthrough but i think the pressure is building very very significantly and she states it, it is all pressure towards a resolution let's now have a look at the latest developments for tiximal chwy also known as chewy and uh, what i posted earlier in terms of the breaking news that the roaring kitty has filed an sec 13g for chewy and he's also done this for uh, an investment of nine, just in excess of nine million shares, or overall 6.6% of the company. And at the time of my post, the stock was up pro approximately 20%. Uh, but what's interesting in the filing here, if you look at the um, highlighted section in yellow, I don't know how he's got away with this, but he's also uh, added a box that states he is not a cat. But there was an option to say he what he, he is a cat. Uh, what David Lauer has stated uh, in his post is obviously he's filed the, with the SEC for a new stake in Chewy. Uh, and while we all look towards the YOLO updates to see what's going on, this will definitely go down as the funniest SEC filing ever. And I do agree with that. Uh, but in negative news for Roaring Kitty, what Peruvian Bull had posted is that they, they are now suing Roaring Kitty for securities fraud. That seems laughable. Uh, and when are they going to sue uh, Bill Ackman for pumping and dumping stocks before COVID and many, many other people? Um, and I would also potentially add people in Congress as well. And what Danish uh, or Danish has stated here is uh, Roaring Kitty has been sued in the Eastern District of uh, New York for securities fraud related to these recent tweets about GameStop. And meanwhile, obviously uh, all members of Congress trade on stocks, they influence or have um, obviously information on, could we, we could say. And what Citroen have posted, and we know Citroen is, um, uh, is a huge shot. They've stated here, it seems pretty clear that Keith Jill, i.e. Uh, Roaring Kitty, is investing $200 million in Chewy. Unlike, it is unlikely that this is his own money. Uh, even selling all these GameStop without paying taxes, it doesn't add up. So certainly it looks like they have a big problem with this. They're not happy uh, and they are basically saying this uh, is suspicious. And I, I think one of the reasons why they would be saying that is because certainly it is organisations like them that would be taking a hit. So let's have a look at the share price for Tixamal CHWY at the time the news was broken. And we can see here it was up approximately 26% at one time, trading at $34.34. And then if we look at which has posted is uh, we can see a significant sell off and obviously looks like a short attack and what Wooch has stated is that he discloses an, uh, an investment of just in excess of 9 million shares and the stock is in red. How does that make sense? And that is a question I'd like to ask as well. Uh, and uh, what Wooch has also added on is that his Robin Hood is also having issues for uh, users today uh, where they obviously we can see on the message screen from Robin Hood server error so it looks like people will be struggling to buy or sell what Kevin Malone has stated is that now another slam dunk case on naked short selling and synthetic shares for Chewy and I think this is a huge huge problem that is growing in the market and more people are aware of it but obviously what we can see here is uh, something that is obviously uh, we could say not a surprise uh, there is a class action lawsuit filed against roaring kitty and i think this is probably from all the hedge funds getting together and uh, this law lawsuit a class action uh, is against allegations with regard to gme and amc so um let's see what happens in this particular case uh, because obviously um hedge funds do not like losing Finally, let's finish up by having a look at the symbol NNE, also known as nanonuclear energy. This is a stock that we have been following for a while and has also been featured in a number of previous videos. And I can see right now today at time of editing, it's currently up in excess of 25.81% at $29.49. And we can also see in the previous week, at, between Monday and Tuesday, it was up in excess of 113%. So certainly a stock that is extremely volatile and a great stock for people who have been uh, taking making profits uh, and it was also up 44% uh, close of play on the Friday so another one that we called ours EPOW that's up over 40% Monday and also was up 10% uh, on the week TALO another great call that was up 7.3% on the week 
uh, AVPT up 4.1% on the week, ICU, that was another call, that was up 20% Monday and also up 1% on the week, TTSH, that closed level, NXL, that was up 70% Monday, 80% Monday to Wednesday, then there was a sell-off on Thursday, so always a good idea to protect your profits or take profits, and then it closed down 5% on the week. SRPT, that was down 2.6% on the week. Not all calls are successful. So if you would like to get a copy of our daily stock alerts as well as our weekly watch list, details are in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned.